When I was a kid, I loved watching Cartoon Network, especially their original shows like Ed, Ed and Eddie, Dexter's Laboratory, Cow and Chicken, and of course, the Powerpuff Girls. For those who don't know, the Powerpuff Girls cartoon was, just like Darkwing Duck, a parody on traditional superhero tropes. Powerpuff Girls was a lot sanier though, with a lot of really crazy off-the-wall humor. The show centered around a group of three super-powered sisters, Blossom, the leader, Buttercup, the roughneck, and Bubbles, the cute one. The girls were accidentally created by Professor Utonium, a mild-mannered scientist who was trying to create the perfect little girl, for some reason. Set in the fictional city of Townsville, the Powerpuff Girls used their powers to protect the city and its citizens from various supervillains. Now, it was these supervillains that I really liked about the show. Just like Darkwing Duck, the Powerpuff Girls feature one of the most awesome rogues galleries in all of animation. And I'm here to count down my 5 favorite members out of said rogues gallery. I'm only familiar with the earlier seasons of the show though, so that's what I'm drawing from. Anyway, as always, feel free to list your own favorites down in the comments. And here we go. Number 5. Mr. Mime as far as I know, this character only appeared in one single episode, making him a one-shot villain. Still, I like Mr. Mime just the same anyway. So Mr. Mime was originally the birthday clown Rainbow the Clown, a happy singing clown who performed at kids' birthdays, quite the opposite of his villainous alter ego. Following one performance, a truck filled with bleach nearly hits poor Rainbow, missing him by an inch. After surviving such a close call, all the bleach in the truck then comically poured out and completely drenched Rainbow. Somehow the bleach trans from the happy colorful clown into Mr. Mime, an evil black and white mime with the power to remove sounds and color. This Mr. Hyde persona then set out to rob Townsville of its vibrant life, turning the city and its people into a soundless and black and white nightmare. So do I even need to explain why I like this character so much? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Clown and mime villains are cool enough already, but a split persona clown mime with the power to suck the color and sounds out of everything, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. You might be wondering why I'm placing Mr. Mime so low on the list. Well, he was just a one-shot character and I can't understand why that was. How many times could you have him turn Townsville black and white and soundless? Mr. Mime was pretty one notes in the end. He did work wonderfully for that one episode though. It definitely stood out for me as a kid. A creepy and surreal sort of Twilight Zone styled episode. Poor Rainbow got handed a pretty raw deal too. None of Mr. Mime's actions were really his fault. Yet after being cured, the Powerpuff Girls still beat the living crap out of him and sent him to jail. That's sad. And funny. The character was voiced by Tom Kenny. Number 4. Him Simply known as him, this guy is one of the Powerpuff's most recurring foes and their very deadliest. Even the other rogues are afraid of him. So as you can see, him is a pretty strange looking dude. If he even is a dude, a cross-dressing effeminate devil is what he kinda looks like. With lobster hands. Because why not? Did I mention this show was crazy? Well, him is definitely one of the craziest parts of the show. It's pretty difficult to even explain this guy. He's very evil though, that's for sure, and loves to spread chaos and misery in Townsville. Him has a a wide array of undefined powers like mind control, super strength, shape shifting, reality manipulation, laser eye beams, he can basically do anything. He uses his powers and his sadistic mind to mess with the Powerpuffs and Townsville, seemingly just for fun. Usually his schemes involve pitting the girls against each other or Townsville against the girls. Whenever him appears, you know you're in for a very dark and twisted episode. Needless to say, him is the show's creepiest rogue by far. A lot of that is due to his schizophrenic personality. Him is usually very calm and gleeful, speaking in a very weird, soft voice, but can suddenly change to outright rageful and sinister in a heartbeat, and then back again. Pretty messed up for a children's cartoon, Him's freaky voice was provided by Tom Kane. Number 3. The Amoeba Boys the Amoeba Boys, Bossman Jr. and Slim, are a trio of Amoeba, for some weird reason, who fancies themselves hotshot gangsters and aspires to become the most dangerous supervillains in Townsville. In reality though, the Amoeba Boys are actually totally incompetent criminals and complete jokes. What they regard as master crimes include stealing an apple or standing on the grass. In their minds, they're the Powerpuff's greatest enemies, but of course, the girls don't even consider them a threat. The Amoeba Boys have big dreams, but simply lack the intelligence 
takes imagination and guts to actually pull off any real crimes. These guys remind me of typical loser villains in comics. Guys like Killer Moth who dream of becoming big shot supervillains, but instead end up being treated as jokes. And for that, I love the Amoeba Boys. They're definitely among the funniest parts of the entire show. Whenever they appear, you know it's going to be a hilarious episode. Besides their amusing bumbling, they also have entertaining personalities. All three act and talk like stereotypical 1930s gangsters. Since they're completely incapable of pulling off any real crimes though, I guess it's almost a stretch to even call these guys villains. Besides their incompetence, they also seem a bit too kind-hearted to ever truly hurt anyone. Often they even end up assisting the girls. And really, they're more friends than enemies. The Amoeba Boys aren't really bad, they just got silly ideas of a life of crime. Hilarious and sympathetic, you just gotta love the Amoeba Boys. I'm sure they'd be ecstatic too if they found out I ranked them as the third greatest Powerpuff Rogues, ahead of freaking him himself. Bossman Jr. and Slim were all voiced by Chuck McCann. Number 2. Princess Morbux Hailing from a rich family, Princess is the most spoiled little brat you'll ever see. She was introduced as a new student at the Powerpuff's kindergarten, and immediately became enamored with the crime-busting gals. Being the entitled little brat that she is, Princess demanded that they make her part of the team, let her join their crime fighting. Of course, since she didn't have any actual superpowers, they passed, and they also didn't really like her. Again, being an entitled little brat, Princess became furious. How dare they deny her? Instead of fangirling all over the Powerpuff's, she she began to hate them, the only ones who'd ever refused her something. Princess then did what she always does, she ran to her rich daddy. With his money she bought all kinds of gadgets and weaponry, giving herself artificial powers. Instead of using these for good though, she became a supervillain, hellbent on crushing those arrogant power puffs. I just absolutely love Princess, a gloriously smug, self-entitled, snotty little supervillainess. Like the Amoeba Boys, she's one of the funniest rogues on the show and her episodes are as a result among the most entertaining. She's an interesting character too, with that giant ego of hers, Princess naturally saw herself as a powerful superhero, admired and loved by everyone. But the Powerpuff's rejection forced the true Princess to come out, a sinister, selfish supervillain. Of course, in her mind, she's probably not the villain, it's those evil Powerpuff Girls. Talk about living a delusion. Princess Morbux, voiced by Jennifer Hale, easily could have been the Powerpuff's arch enemy. If only it wasn't for that other one, who fittingly enough is our number one on this list. Mojo Jojo. Yeah, I bet you didn't see that coming. Me, Mr. Rogues, putting the arch nemesis on the number one spot. Am I feeling alright? Maybe I'm sick or something. No, it's actually true. The Powerpuff Rogue Scholar is for once an example where I prefer the nemesis over all the others. And how could I not? I mean, it's a green monkey with an oversized domed brain wearing a purple cape and talking with a Japanese accent. What's not to love about that? Then of course there's Mojo's habit of rambling way too much, basically repeating the same point over and over. Superfluous exposition, I suppose you could call it? Regardless, it's freaking hilarious. Anyway, Mojo's origin story reveals him as Jojo, Professor Utonium's assistant chimpanzee. Why he chose a chimpanzee as an assistant, I have no idea. And it certainly didn't pay off very well either, as Jojo was terrible in the lab, always wrecking stuff. It was actually Jojo's recklessness that caused Utonium to accidentally create the Powerpuff Girls. This lab accident also gave Jojo his super intelligence. For some reason, he remembers these events in a pretty different light and seems to blame the power puffs for Utonium eventually throwing him out. That wasn't really the case, but nevertheless Jojo became Mojo Jojo, the greatest supervillain in Townsville, determined to destroy those pesky little girls and rule the world. As entertaining as some of these other rogues are, none can beat this green little monkey in that department. Everything about him is fantastic. His speech, his mannerisms, his overly convoluted villain schemes, his over-the-top devices of doom, his twisted motivations. Mojo seems to hate the world and everyone in it. He carries a major chip on his shoulder, possibly due to some insecurities, which is maybe not so strange considering the fact he's a green little monkey. Regardless, Mojo Jojo is a great villain. One of the greatest cartoon villains, period. His voice was provided by Roger L. Jackson. So there you have it, those are my 5 favorite Powerpuff Rogues. For once, the nemesis actually nabbed number 1 spot. I think that's only happened once before, on my Green Lantern list, where I ranked Sinestro as number 1. Anyway, don't forget to rank your own favorites in the comments. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.